I'm heading out, Mom. Where are you going? I'm seeing a movie. Movies are expensive. You know we can't afford to waste money on that. One of my friends is going to pay for me. Okay, who's taking you? Rob. Is he paying for you as well? Yes. I don't like that you're spending so much time with Rob. He's a bad influence on you. Oh, come on, Mom. Rob's a really great guy. He seems very shady, and I don't think you should be spending so Okay, much Mom. Finally, you're here. Oh my god, you just got in the car. You're already on this again? You're late. I'm five minutes late. That's not even late. The phrase five minutes late literally ends with the word late. But it's within the reasonable margin of error. If you got to the doctor's office and they started your appointment five minutes late, you'd be happy. No, in fact, you'd be ecstatic. But you're not a doctor, and you said you'd pick me up five minutes earlier than when you got here. So you're late. And last time... Oh, come on. Don't even start about last time. But you were late. But everything went fine. But you were 20 minutes late. I know. I messed up last time. But everything went according to plan. Well... Did everything else go as planned? Yes, it did. Happy? Thank you. It's fine, though. This place is only 10 minutes away. If anything, we're going to be early. That's just as bad. Oh my god, Goldilocks. How is being early just as bad as being late? What if someone sees? Can you keep your anxiety under control for 10 minutes? But if someone sees, they could assume... What are they going to assume? That we're dating? Well, when I told my mom that you were buying my movie ticket, I'm almost positive she thought we were going on a date. <laughs> really? That's amazing. Not really. She kind of hates you. Wait, why does she hate me? Well, you're really shady. Oh, you're one to talk. It's just, of the few times she's met you, you've been late. I was only late that one time. But you were so late. There was traffic. Then you should have left earlier. Could you stop bitching about my lateness for five seconds and calm the hell down? Sorry, how was your day? It, it was okay. I spent most of the day reading. What book? I actually just finished the book that the movie we're supposed to see is based on. Was it any good? Well, it was fine. I'm not a book critic. You don't have to be a book critic to have an opinion. I mean, it was fine. I don't think I picked up on some of the subtle foreshadowing that the author wanted me to see immediately, but, you know, it was all right. I'm excited to see how the book translates in the movie. Me too. We should go together. How about tomorrow? Kind of busy tonight. Ha, you're not actually funny. You know that, right? Thanks. But yeah, I totally agree. I like to see how they put that foreshadowing to the movie. It's not that simple. Foreshadowing in books is entirely different from foreshadowing in movies. I mean, not really. Are you kidding me? One is entirely visual and the other is literary. I mean, it doesn't have to be totally visual. You can use dialogue to do foreshadowing as well. But the best foreshadowing is from visual cues. That way it flows better in the movie. Okay, that's BS. Why are we even arguing about this anyway? It's important. No, it's not. Because in the end, foreshadowing doesn't affect whether a movie's good or bad. Yes, it does. It adds to the rewatchability. Only if it's good. I've never heard somebody say, wow, that movie was really bad, but I gotta rewatch it for that sweet foreshadowing. All right, whatever. Exactly. Uh, we're almost there. Did you bring the stuff we're gonna sneak in? Yep. All right, great. We're here. Get your mask on. Get ready for tonight. Get him pumped about it. Remember the plan. I'm gonna go to the basement. I'm gonna get all the stuff that's down there. You stay in the bedrooms, disarm the alarms, get the jewelry. Is that all you have? Yes, it's <laughs> all I have. <laughs> Can we just go already? All right. 